So October is coming up and that is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Join us on the next Dr. Heidi Cook Show and we will be talking about thermography. Thermography is just one more thing that you can add to your toolbox to, to help prevent an early detection of any types of breast cancer. Also, we will be taking a look at essential oils, what they are, what they can do for us, and how can we can add them into our life. So join us on the next Dr. Heidi Cook Show, and we'll talk about thermography and essential oils. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Heidi Cook and this is the Dr. Heidi Cook Show. So October is right around the corner and breast cancer awareness is uh, the month of October. Breast cancer awareness is a campaign to make us more aware of the disease. Now honestly, most of us have been affected in some way, friends, family who have had breast cancer. So in addition to bringing awareness to the disease, it is also a chance for us to remember and talk about all the things that we can do to help early detection of breast cancer. So in a few minutes, we are going to bring out Sue Horton. She is the owner of Central Iowa Compounding in Urbandale, Iowa, and also at that location is the, the Thermography of Iowa. So we're gonna bring her out. We're gonna talk about what is thermography, how can it help us, how can we fit it into our own health plan. In addition to that, um, in a, after the second half, we're gonna talk with Sue about essential oils. What these are, how they can benefit us, they can be used in so many different ways, and we can give you a quick tutorial on essential oils. Before we get to those things, I would like for you to go check out Sam and Gabe's restaurant on Hickman Road. Um, they are open for dinners and they are also having live music on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. They have a great brunch on Sundays from 10.30 until 2 p.m. And they are soon going to be opening up a second location in East Village. So go and check them out on samandgabes.com. And when we come back, we will be talking about thermography and essential oils. Welcome back. So we are going to jump right in and talk to Sue Horton. She is the owner of Central Iowa Compounding, and in that location is also Thermography of Iowa. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we're going to talk about thermography. So just in general, what is thermography? Okay, thermography is using a digital infrared imaging camera to detect heat patterns in the breast or vascularity. And what that means is, as early as 90 days of abnormal cells, precancerous cells forming in your breast, it causes, it needs blood flow. So it increases the blood flow to that area and that creates heat. That heat can be picked up with the digital infrared imaging camera. And then you, um, each breast is looked at separately by, by the doctor that reads it. Um, and they're, they're given a grading of a vascular pattern. And what that means is there is a score kind of card for each mm -hmm. breast. And it could be as low as a TH1, which is a normal breast tissue with no vascularity, to a TH5, which is very vascular and is really not a good thing. Okay. And so each breast is looked at about 30 some points. Um, they look at to determine and give each one an independent score. And then you get your scoring. And based on that, then we look at is there something we should be doing to help improve that score. So we're trying to look at, think of it as earlier detection than anything conventionally out there. We're trying to pick stuff up early, you know, in the early, early stages versus waiting for an actual tumor to be detected. Okay, okay. So if someone were to um, have a, like a big family history, this is something that they can start very early. Right, you can do your first thermogram as early as age 20. 
Um, there is no compression, there's no radiation, there's no anything like that. You're just acclimated in a room for 15 minutes uh, with your top off to kind of make it stable with yourself in the room. And um, the temperature is very controlled. You can't have a fever, anything that could increase the heat emitted from your body. So um, you, you, it, that takes about 15 minutes. Then the images literally take maybe three, four minutes to okay. take. So, um, and then they're, they are electronically submitted to Redwood City, California, where a Dr. Bill Amalu reads them. Okay. So, and then we get the report back, and then from there, we may or may not do anything. If it's a great reading, um, you know, that's awesome. If um, what gets concerning is if you have like a TH score of a four or five in one breast and then, you know, like a one or two in the other breast, so there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And then we try to do things to intervene at that stage before something can be picked up um, structurally. So we'll do things like balancing hormones, help your body detox, help your body clear estrogen. There is an essential oil called Healthy Breast Girls that um, actually will, um, with the lymphatic massage, you can get toxins out of the breast. Um, there's supplements you can take. There's a lot of things we do and try to be really aggressive up front if we see something that's disconcerting to try and turn that around and then we'll recheck the patient in three to six months depending on what occurs. But so you can have your baseline at 20, then they recommend depending on how that comes out every two to three years and then after 30 we can do it yearly if we need to. Um, there it doesn't matter if women have fibrocystic breasts, if they have large breasts, small breasts, implants, pregnant, nurse, you know, any of those things do you not. You can still do that. You can still do it very, very safely okay. and as often as you need to. Okay, so great thing for someone either with family history who wants to take a look more often, who just wants something else or has a feeling something's going on. Right. Okay. Right. And we have a lot of women that intuitively just know something is not going on and it's not being picked up okay. by other methods. And so they'll come in and their intuition is just telling them and they'll, we'll take a look and sure enough, something's going on. So then we try to aggressively help them to reverse that. And I had that happen to myself. Um, probably about seven years ago. So I've been um, involved with thermography t for 10 years. And about seven years ago that happened to me and I have strong family history of breast cancer on both sides of my family. So that's why I got involved in this because I felt like I just needed something more uh, to help. I just didn't feel like I was doing enough. And indeed something was picked up and I did a bunch of the things we talked about and in four months it reversed. Okay. So it went back that's to amazing. normal. Yeah. 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 So if someone were to come in for a um, thermogram, how long is that visit typically? Um, we say allow a half hour, but okay. it's actually, you have to fill out some paperwork that takes five minutes, 15 minutes for the acclimation in the room, and then the images only take three or four minutes. Okay. But a lot of times patients have questions and things. That, so about a half hour. And, um, and there is a lot of things on your website that they should yep. not do prior. And right. it all has to do with adding heat to your body. Right. Or avoiding adding heat to your body. Right. The, if you can go to www.thermographyofiowa.com and there is um, a patient instruction sheet and it will tell you that you don't want to do anything 24 hours to create heat. So you don't want a massage. You don't want a chiropractic acupuncture treatment. You don't want to wear deodorant the morning of. You don't want to shave your arm pits the morning of, mm -hmm. um, things like that. You don't want to take a hot shower right before you come in. You don't want to exercise four hours before because we don't want anything to increase the heat patterns in the breasts. So we can, and, and we obviously if you have a fever, we can't do it. So mm -hmm. we actually take everybody's temperature. And then our room is kept between about 19 and 23 degrees Celsius. So we have to have a very even temperature room. and we have to actually upload the temperature of the patient in the room to the physician when okay. he reads it. So that's part of the whole report. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And is there anybody other than someone who has a fever, is there anybody else who should not have thermography? Not to my knowledge, no, because okay. it's very, very safe. You know, there's no real intervention on the body. There's no touching of the body. There's no 
You know, like I said, no compression, no radiation. Okay. It's just a digital infrared imaging, so. And can, um, what else is thermography used for? Um, thermography is used a lot by chiropractors to detect trigger points for pain. Um, we've also had some dentists that have sent patients to us because we can pick up dental, hidden dental infections that aren't picked up by an x-ray. Um, we've seen it for uh, a couple physicians have used it to detect thyroid conditions. Um, there's all kinds of things. You can do a full body therm versus a uh, breast thermography but patients have to understand that it doesn't go deep, deep inside the body. It okay. only goes, you know, surface. So you can't pick something up that's way going on way internally. Right, way okay. internally, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and price-wise for a breast thermogram? The nationwide, they run about 245. We've okay. kept a special going for the past few years at 150. And then during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which um, due to the demand is October, November, and December okay. for us, <laughs> we do an additional 10% off, so 135 during that time. Okay. Just so. to get out, get those women in and get right. them to take a look. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. okay. Right. Well, so um, Thermography of Iowa, again, check them out at iowathermography.com. Is that um, right? Thermography of Iowa. Thermography of Iowa dot com. Yeah. Um, they are located in Central Iowa Compounding on 100th Street in Urbandale, Iowa. Um, check out the website and any questions or interest, call them and um, they can answer anything you have. Welcome back. So we are going to talk in this segment about essential oils. So essential oils are powerful products that can be used to add benefit to your health and to um, everyday living. So let's kind of jump right in. So essential oils, what are they? Okay, essential oils are um, come from either herbs, botanicals, plants. They're, they take part of the plant and they distill it and purify it um, and incorporate it into like these little bottles you see here. Um, and they're used for health benefits. They've been used since biblical times, uh, like frankincense, myrrh, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they can be used um, either externally where you apply them on, like say you're having a headache, you can use like one called peppermint or pan away which is a blend of oils to kind of rub around the area to help relieve pain. You can use them internally uh, in capsule form where you can put a few drops in a capsule and swallow them. Um, you can also diffuse them with a diffuser so it gets throughout the whole room or the whole area um, and that can help in many ways. It can help not only purify the air but it can help with sleep, it can help relax people, things like that. So they're used many ways. Um, people should appreciate how strong they are and how potent. Sometimes a few drops is, is very potent. And you really want to go with the manufacturer's suggestions should you be able to take them internally, <laughs> externally, diffuse them. So they'll all give you guidelines on what to do. Because even topically, sometimes they're too strong. So you have to use what's called a carrier oil, like olive, grapeseed, um, vegetable oil, things like that, where you put a couple drops in it and then put it onto the okay. skin. So, so any particular manufacturer will have that in a brochure or a pamphlet yes. online, yes. something like that, so yep. people will know how to exactly use them. Right. Because some you can ingest, some you, you can. Shouldn't. Yeah. And there is a book called, um, it's a really big hardbound book called The Essential Oils Desk Reference which has just amazing things in there for any type of condition you might be looking for. There's some really good online websites that can help you. So say you have a headache and you don't know which one to use, you could go on, look it up, and it will give you several suggestions on what to use and how to use it. So if someone was doesn't know anything really about essential oils mm -hmm. and wants to go and look for some, mm -hmm. what, what should they look for or are there things they shouldn't? that they don't want? Um, you know, there there's a lot of talk about the purity, like Young Living is one of the biggest ones in the industry. It's 
by no means the only one. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, and they have a program called Seed to Seal. That means they take the plants, they're organic, they take them from the time they plant the seed to make the plant, you know, and, and the nutrition they have to grow the plant from the time they harvest it, how they harvest it, how they purify it, distill it, and get it in the oil. So sometimes there's an increased cost with that versus some other oils, but sometimes you kind of get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've had people, you know, that have used a certain brand and then come back because they didn't get the same effect, from, effect it. from it so um, but there there are a lot of options out there and okay yeah yeah, yeah. so um, so other than headaches so let, let's talk about some things that some specific ailments that essential oils can help with okay um, lavender is very calming so if people are anxious stressed out using lavender oil can help um, it's kind of in my toolbox. I never leave home without lavender. Another one is peppermint. Like we talked about, it helps for pain. It also helps for any kind of stomach type thing. So if you have an upset stomach, nausea, things like that, you can put a couple drops in a bottle of water and drink it to help. You can put it over the area of the stomach. You can, you know, put it, like I say, sometimes on your hand like this. My kids would get car sick. I'd put a couple drops there and have them smell the oil and it really makes a huge difference with that. Um, lemon is very um, antibacterial and people don't know that and energizing. Um, probably the most popular one that we sell is called Thieves and mm -hmm. Thieves is really interesting because back like I think in the 15th century when they had the Black Plague, people would actually make a concoction of a blend of oils and put that like over a kerchief over their face and go rob dying people. They were thieves and they would not get the Black Plague. So still to this day then Gary Young, the founder of Young Living Oils, came up with this blend and it's antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal. So um, that is just amazing if you're getting cough, colds, flu, respiratory, um, anything like that. And there's also a whole line of products of thieves for like hand soap, um, dish soap, um, fruit and veggie rinse, um, they have hand sanitizer, they just have an entire line of thieves products which are really amazing. That's oh, probably our yeah. number one seller. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that one, this is actually my kind of home supply. I can't go into Central Iowa compounding <laughs> without coming out with another one or two. So this is one of the diffusers, There's, but there's many different kinds of diffusers right. in New Cary. I saw it just the other day, yeah. several different types. Yeah, and some of them depend on um, if you want it to diffuse continuous or intermittent, go on for a while, off for a while. Like if you have a sick child, you can put the diffuser next to the bed and sometimes they'll have it go on and off every so often, mm -hmm. you know, to, to help with that. So I, I used them with my kids yeah. a lot. They each had a diffuser yeah, in, in their, their room. room. Yeah. yeah. So, yep, diffusers, this is one of the roll-ons, and this one is the anxiety one that you can just put on and Right, yep, and you just and roll it on like here or here or here or wherever, and they yeah. have them, uh, roll-ons for pain, they have them for anxiety, they have them for sleep, they have them for all kinds of things, so. Okay, and um, yeah, and actually the one that I think I just got was the uh -huh. Digest, which, helps with a lot of just intestinal issues. Right, okay. right, yeah. And yeah. that one, so like that one you can use topically, you can in, inhale it or uh -huh. use the, uh -huh. anything else with that one? I think you can even put a couple drops of that in a capsule. Okay. I'd have to look, but yeah. there, and, and a, like that one has a blend. So I think there's like seven or eight oils in there that all help with with GI problems. Okay. So um, a lot of the blends are really a nice way to go. And so um, again, any anybody who should not use essential oils um, or you any just, circumstances where they shouldn't? You just have to be careful because they are so strong. So the biggest thing I would say is um, people, before they put them topically, they maybe want to patch test the area just with a little tiny bit of drop and make sure there's no irritation. Um, or go with the manufacturer's guidelines and put it in a carrier oil because you can still get great benefits mm -hmm. from doing that. So that would be the number one thing and you don't want to ingest anything that's not made for that. So you really have to look at the manufacturer 
okay. recommendations, okay. yes. And is there um, a particular one that is good for like muscular there's discomfort one, or pain? There's one called Deep Relief that comes in a roll-on. Okay. Um, and that has a blend of oils all for, for that. There's also another one called Panaway, which okay. is just a regular oil. So, and they both, I think, have peppermint in them. So that's one of the key things. But they also have a little bit different blend. So they can work awesome, you know, yeah. back pain, muscle pain, yeah. Okay. So as far as essential oils, um, you can use them, diffuse them, you can roll them on topically, you can, some of them you can ingest. Um, they have lots of very powerful health benefits. Um, so you also can use them as household cleaners. Right. So if you have any questions, um, certainly go into Central Iowa Compounding, take a look. They're very knowledgeable and can help you find just exactly what you need. Um, look online, Young Living is the one that we were talking about earlier. Um, but give Central Iowa Compounding a call, ask any questions, and they will help you out.